So I just put together a video. I have it uploaded and ready to go right now. Not even sure if I'm gonna upload anymore because, well, I thought there wasn't really that much more to talk about. The video was a short, so less than one minute. It was gonna be my first short ever and it was titled My Biggest Regret as a Computer Science Student, talking about one thing that I did not talk about in the My Regrets as a Computer Science Student video from years ago, and that is overloading myself with work. I figured that was fairly straightforward. Don't overload myself with work. And uh, I was gonna make it to a short, but now I don't think that's the best idea anymore. I came to my, hey, computer science students don't cheat video, and I'm just reading all of these different comments. And it's evident to me that there's a bigger problem, and that is around the idea of you have to finish college in four years. While it's nice to be able to finish college in four years, and that's kind of how they try to set up the curriculum, you're doing yourself a disservice at aiming for that four-year goal just for the sake of finishing it in four years. Now, you are you may be telling me like, hey, four years is a long time for education, and I agree with that. You can do, go take a boot camp in 12 weeks or something like that, and you can get a lot of programming knowledge through there. But when it comes to a computer science degree, when you're trying to aim for that four years, you end up overloading yourself on classes. Not to mention if you have anything outside, like you have a side hustle, you wanna work on your own projects, you have a job to make sure you can sustain that living. And when you overload yourself on courses, you don't learn as much because you don't have enough time to allocate towards those classes. When you don't have enough time to allocate towards those classes, but you still need to make sure that you get a passing grade, that's when you do resort to cheating. Or even if you do end up getting a C in a class, you may have been able to get an A in that class if you were to drop one or two of those classes instead of taking five classes in a single semester, maybe take three or four. I know there are some scholarships and there are some loans and stuff that require you to be a full-time student rather than a part-time student, and that's all your situation, but I would recommend taking as few classes as possible every single semester. And a little cheat around that, if you do have to take a certain amount of classes every single semester, then take easy as many easy classes along with very interesting classes. So if you're having a programming class and you wanna spend a lot of time on that programming class, but you still have to take three or four other classes, make those three or four other classes super easy classes. If you know something's gonna be easy, whether you looked it up on Rate My Professor, or you looked it up on, I don't know, whatever, however you determine that it's an easy class, maybe you're just good at that subject, take those along with the classes that you find interesting so you can focus more time on those classes that you find interesting. To reference some of these comments I'm talking about, Lay Psycho, <laughs> that's a funny name. They said, learning can be so fun and fulfilling, but once you start competing for grades, it's crazy how that feeling goes away. And that is exactly right. Learning should be fun. Getting grades, and while I am a competitive person, I like competitive things. I, when it comes to a grade, I don't care to compete against other people. Like that grade, my grade has nothing to do with anybody else. Although my school did have weighted grading, so I guess my grades did have something to do with everyone else. But eh, that doesn't matter. In all honesty, the grades don't matter. They do to an extent, but learning is much more beneficial. <laughs> learning is what the whole point of college is to go to. I understand some jobs you need that degree, so that's why you're getting the degree instead of just being self-taught. Some people need grades for scholarships. There's another comment about that here. I need good grades to keep my scholarship so I can afford to actually go to college. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And I understand that. But back to my original point, I do think that if you can alleviate your workload as much as possible, so you can spend more time on these classes and not having to, well, resort to cheating in these classes. That way you can actually focus more time. You can get good grades and you can earn those grades and you can learn by earning those grades. That's the proper way to go about it. Another comment from Matt Evans is getting tougher to complete a science engineering degree in four years if you have to work a job at the same time. I don't even know how people do that because trying to work a job at the same time when I was taking a full course load, mind you, this was like five classes in a single semester. I say I regret these things because this is something I actually did. Like I'm talking from experience and I'm just hypothetically speaking. Like I took heavy course loads. I took a heavy course load when I was working full time, 40 hours a week, not including an hour uh, of commute each way and not including trying to build my YouTube channel on the side as well. And not a flex, just a fact of the matter of how my life was, especially during that semester. I don't even know how you be a full-time student while working full-time and still actually learning everything that your class has to offer. It's, that's insane. ZD says, I regret shooting for good grades and using online sources rather than learning myself and possibly getting a lower grade. College is just so stressful. Professors don't realize some students can have two to three exams on the same day, maybe even four the same week. It's hard to spend time focusing on all of them. And I, 
I agree with this. I mean, it's kind of hard not to. And there is a slight rebuttal where you can talk about, well, these classes should kind of like coordinate. You know, all these computer science classes, they're in the same exact curriculum and same building taught by the same professors. They should be able to know that you're taking all these different courses. Well, <laughs> this is college. And in college, you're taking all of these other random crap courses that nobody is ever going to need ever. But to make sure you're a nice, well-rounded student, they make you take all these crap classes like art history. Sorry if you're interested in art history. I wasn't, but <laughs> that was the most interesting one out of that to, to fulfill that requirement. But it's another rant for another day. What I'm really trying to say is while some teachers will kind of coordinate with each other because they're in the same curriculum, like computer science teachers and computer science teachers, why well, I'm in all these other random classes with a bunch of random people and they're not all computer science students. They could be math students. They could be communication majors. They could be anything. So there's no way that that particular professor can coordinate with every single professor of all of the students to make sure that we're not getting overloaded in a single week with three or four exams. Because the fact of the matter is, it's kind of just... I'm not even sure if it's possible to actually learn all the material for those exams within those weeks leading up to all of those exams if they're happening at the same time. Not to mention, there's a lot more that you have to do other than just study for the exams and you know projects and stuff like that and i know there's always going to be some person oh it's not just computer science it's all of, i know that but my niche is computer science so that's what to talk about and this one is one i really want to touch on because it's the premise of my whole entire video honestly if you are in high school and you're reading this you may not understand when college students talk about workload sometimes it is not humanly possible to do all the work they give you each semester no matter how hard working you are you'll hit a point where you have to choose between cheating or failing a lab failing your homework failing your test etc the only way to escape this situation is drop some course especially if you're engineering especially if you're engineering and this <laughs> I've made jabs at communication majors in the past, but it's just a fact of the matter that if you take a full course load of communications classes, you're not going to do anywhere near as much work as someone who's in a STEM field. So alleviate your coursework as much as possible. Something you may want to look into, which is pretty cool, that many colleges offer summer courses. Some actually even offer winter courses for that very short winter break. And I know you want to take your breaks, but think about it this way. Instead of taking five classes in the spring semester where you're just working all the time and you don't have time for anything else and you still don't even get that good of grades and you still don't even learn that much. Well, how about taking four classes in the spring and then one in the summer? Maybe take three in the spring and two in the summer. Something like that that'll allow you to dedicate more time to each class. You'll be able to get better grades by actually doing the work and actually learning. That way you don't have to result to cheating. You don't have to result to dropping out of anything because the whole entire curriculum builds on top of each other as well. So if you're cheating your way through some of these early classes, then you're gonna have no idea what in the world to do when you come to the next class. That's why there are prerequisites to other classes because that class is building upon that prerequisite. And if you cheat in that prerequisite, then you, you what are you gonna do when you're doing a, a more advanced class than that prerequisite that is built upon that prerequisite? I think you get the idea. There's so much more I could talk about here. Maybe I'll do that in a future video, but as for this video, I think that's all I have to say on the matter.